Good morning, friends, and welcome to worship. It is our last Sunday in August, and so good to see you all. So a couple of quick announcements. If you took one of those cute little Habitat for Humanity coin boxes, those are due back this week, so please bring them back. Also, we're going to have our Blessing the Backpacks on September 12th. Also, we have some exciting new things starting on September 12th. We have a youth uh, Sunday school is going to be starting up. Children's Sunday school is going to be starting up at 9 o'clock. The Pearsall class is coming back, and we're going to have a new adult class. It's geared towards parents of youth because they'll be studying the same thing, but all are welcome. So we hope that you will join for one of those awesome groups. All right, friends, I hope you're doing well. I'm Pastor Stephanie, and blessed to be the pastor of the Gathering at Scott Memorial United Methodist Church. So we have a couple scriptures for today. The first scripture comes from John chapter 13, verses 34 through 35. Hear now these words from Jesus. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By doing this, everyone know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Then our second scripture comes from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Hear now these words. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing, but is the gift of God, not the result of work, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has cre made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, will you all please pray with me? O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable for you, God, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So friends, uh, last week and this week and next week, we will be looking at John Wesley's three simple rules. So John Wesley is the founder of the Methodist movement, lived over 300 years ago, and he um, set these three rules to live by. And this is what he sees God wanting us to do. This is kind of his summation of all of the Bible, and that's do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. Last week, you all looked at stay in love with God with Pastor Amanda, and this week, we are going to be looking at do good. What does God want us to do, and how are we called to do good? So that's what we'll be looking at today. So we know that as Christians, that we can never earn our way to salvation, right? We know that faith and works go hand in hand, but it's not like we can ever do enough good to earn our way into salvation. And that's really what the author here of Ephesians is talking about. As he says, for by grace you have been saved. We know it's only through God's grace that we are saved by faith. And this is not of your own doing, but a free gift from God. Again, God knows our hearts. Uh, my pride and ego often get me into trouble. Maybe you are in the same boat as me. And so God knows that, guess what? We're not alone. <laughs> Others of us are in the same boat. And so God knows that we like to think um, that we're pretty great people, right? But God knows what's really going on. And God wants to make it very clear that we are saved only by God's gift, that we can, we are can never do enough good to earn our way into salvation just because we're humans. We have this bent towards sinning ever since that first act of disobedience. And so God has made it this way so that we can't boast. It's only God who gets the glory. And John Wesley firmly believes that it is out of gratitude for God, just as we begin to begin to understand that it is only a gift, that gift of salvation only comes from the grace of God that we want to do good works. In fact, John Wesley would say that we couldn't stop ourselves from doing good works when we begin to understand that incredible gift that God is giving us. So that's why faith and works do go hand in hand, right? We don't do the works to get the faith. We, it starts with the faith, but it's because we begin to understand God's incredible love for us that we don't deserve, but God gives us anyways. And that gift of salvation, that's why we do good. That's why we do it. And again, nothing can stop us from doing good as we begin to understand. And the, let me tell you a secret about doing good. It's kind of infectious. And so the more you do it, the more you want to do more and more good out of gratitude for God. 
And so uh, John Wesley believed that we should follow the example of Jesus. A good thing, right? And so Jesus did good in many ways. But a few of the ways that he did good is he did it by healing, feeding, and teaching and sharing the good news about the kingdom of God. The good news about the kingdom of God. And guess what, friends? This has been a um, an issue of people, God wanting us to do good for a long time. In fact, one of my favorite passages that is found on that piece of art comes from Micah chapter 6. So let me read for you again, Micah chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? For he has told you, O mortal, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? So we're not the first people to get this wrong. That's, uh, I guess, the somewhat good news. So God has been telling God's people for generations, I don't want your your offerings that that aren't sincere. I don't want your sacrifices that are half-hearted. What I really want is for you to do good, to do what the Lord asks of you, requires of you. Do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. All of these are action words, by the way. It's not just a passive, but God is asking us to do something and to do good. And so, of course, a good way to do that is to model and to imitate what Jesus did. So we talk, think about Jesus healing, right? We know throughout scripture, Jesus healed so many. One story that comes to mind is when Jesus healed the woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years. All she did was touch the hem of his cloak and she was healed by his power. Also that wonderful story of Jesus healing the 10 lepers. Again, lepers were people who weren't supposed to be touched by anyone, and yet Jesus uh, touched and healed them. Uh, Jesus also gave his disciples the ability to heal. And so we see that, and that's given to us as well. Now, some people have a healing touch, and that's powerful, but for most of us, We heal in different ways, right? It's not that we physically touch someone's body and the cancer is gone. We heal in more emotional ways, and that is a powerful, powerful healing. So research done by the National Center of Biotechnical Information reports in a study that found that robust relationships of social and emotional support can be protective for the health. And so friends, as a pastor, I've seen this time and time again. I know you all, our congregation has stories of this as well. It's powerful when you see someone who is struggling, who's in the hospital, and they're able to have visitors. This was, of course, pre-COVID. They were able to have visitors. You could see how that helped in people's healing. In fact, the research is starting to show that those those, um, emotional supports help the healing process to go faster. Um, I know in my ministry, I've been able to visit people who are in nursing homes or assisted living homes, and you see the people, it's kind of easy to tell who rarely gets visitors just from how they carry themselves and those who are visited often. They carry themselves in such a different way. There is something powerful about the healing that can happen in the power of the church. That's what's something incredible, is that we as people are not related to one another, yet we care for one another. We help in the healing by going to visit, by providing food, by just checking in on people. Just to know that someone is checking in on you and texting you and calling you, that does an amazing amount of stuff to your emotional support. And so we are blessed to be part of that healing. Of course, the Methodist Church has also helped to start hospitals all over the world. And we've also been part of the physical healing as we know that God uses doctors and nurses all the time to create healing. The next thing that Jesus did a lot was feed people, right? We know those wonderful stories. It's in the Gospels about Jesus feeding the at least 5,000. Some reports think it's just the men, and so, so many more when you count the women and children who came to hear Jesus. And then Jesus realizing he also needed food. And so that wonderful story of Jesus feeding all those people with five loaves of bread and two fish. 
and then the amount of leftovers that were there. And of course, Jesus knew that people needed to be fed in order to be able to hear his message. But people also need food, right? We know that people need food. A wonderful way that we have been blessed to do this, of course, is through Fresh Feed Wednesday. We have been blessed to serve over 100,000 people since the pandemic first began. That is incredible. And we do that not by ourselves, but only by the glory of God and by working together with so many others who also deeply care for our neighbors. And we know that it's not just the food. The food, of course, is a big part of it. We know that our clients need the food. But I've also seen over the past 18 months how much the emotional support of coming and seeing the same people week after week, and as we've built relationships with people, how that has changed their demeanor as well. Now, of course, we pray for the day that we aren't needed because the world has enough food, that our community has enough food, and no one needs to come and receive because they can afford it, and there's enough to be shared. But we know that in the interim, we are needed to help feed people because people who are hungry, they can't hear or take in anything else. They need to first have their basic needs be met, which is a big part of doing good. And of course, Jesus also taught. He taught and shared the good news of the kingdom of God. So that first begins with us knowing the Bible, right? How many of us are able to read our Bibles daily or regularly? I have loved, we have a wonderful group that is using the U Bible app. I believe I said that. New version. I think it's called the U version Bible app. And it's awesome because we all get to do it on our own time, but we get to see what others have highlighted and the reflections each one has. And it's helped keep all of us accountable to reading the Bible on a regular basis. And so then as we begin to not only read it, but take in what the Bible says, we're able to live, be a living Bible for the world. Sometimes we are called to share exactly what the Bible says, especially those of you who are parents, God bless you. And you know that a big part of your job is teaching your kids the good news. And of course, are we live in a world that desperately needs to know the good news and not just told to them, but lived to them, lived to them. I'm sure I'm not alone. I grew up with wonderful mentors and still have wonderful mentors and people who live in a way that I desire to live. They live in such a peaceful way. Things that I get anxious about, they don't worry about. They are able to live their faith in powerful, powerful ways. And they model what that looks like to do good. So this week, I just want to encourage you to think about who are those people in your life who inspire you? who live their lives in a way that you want to live? And then what are the things that they have done, they've incorporated to help get them there? Maybe, probably, a lot of it has to do with their faith. So how is it that they are trusting God with their worries? How is it that they're reading their Bible? How is it that they're involved in small groups? And we're so excited because we have some new small groups coming down the way. So we have some, um, starting in September, we're going to start a new sermon series called Taste and See looking at uh, some of those wonderful, tasty things in the Bible. And so lots of different opportunities there where I'm working with two other pastors. And so that means we have a whole plethora of groups available. So I'll be leading a Tuesday lunch group at 11 o'clock at the Taste in Hilltop. Because first of all, I love Taste. So any excuse to go there is a good one. Plus it goes with our sermon series. There'll also be a Facebook group. I know that worked really well for Lent. And then there'll be several other groups throughout our city. So I hope that you will join one of those groups. And then we also have some new Sunday school classes coming to the 9 o'clock hour on Sunday. So one, our youth will be starting their Sunday school again. And then the adults, the parents of youth, though all are invited, will be studying the same lesson, but by themselves so that the youth can talk uh, about their stuff and the adults can talk about their stuff. And then when you guys get home, you can talk about what you learned and you both will have been learning the same material, but in slightly different ways. And of course, the discussion will be different. So we're excited to have those and other options because we know that when we learn in community, we learn so much more because we all don't think the same. And so that's what I love about our Bible, uh, reading the Bible through this app, is I get to see what others glean from a passage, which is very different from what I gleaned from it. And so again, this is part of us being a part of community. So God calls us to do good. 
to do good. That's a part of what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. So how is God calling you to do good this week? What are some of those new practices you can take on? What are those old things you might need to shed? As we all know, we only have limited time. How can you carve out time to do good? All right, friends, will you please pray with me? God, we just give you thanks that you are our God and you call us to do good. But God, help us. I am good at thinking of excuses and letting it be the last thing on my plate instead of the very first thing that I do. So God, help us. Help us to prioritize that doing good so that we can experience your glory in even deeper ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, friends, as we move to our prayer time, I invite you to text, get out your cell phone and to text a prayer to someone. Then I will, we will pray together our breakthrough prayer, and then um, I will pray a prayer for us, and then we will conclude our prayer time with the Lord's Prayer. be with those people we have texted God you know what's going on in each situation so God send what is needed send what is needed God now we boldly pray together our breakthrough prayer God help us to gather with you to feed the body mind and spirit while being Christ's hands and feet help us to love and serve our local community in Jesus name we pray amen Oh God, we lift up so much to you right now. Our hearts break as we see what's happening in Afghanistan. God, keep, keep our troops safe. Keep the domestic pilots, the commercial pilots safe who've been called into action. Protect, protect all, God. We especially ask for protection for those who are seeking to flee Afghanistan. And God, I even pray for the leaders of the Taliban. God, soften their hearts. Open their eyes to you and to your will. We know that violence is not your way. So God, just soften their hearts. Soften their hearts and, and be with families who are waiting to hear news of their loved ones, who are praying for their ser servicemen and women who are over there right now. God, grant them peace in their lives. God, we lift up so much to you. We lift up the wildfires raging in the West, God, continue to protect people. Continue to give the firefighters exactly what they need. We lift up the flooding that happened in Middle Tennessee this past week, God. Oh, goodness. Be with those who are still searching for loved ones. Be with those who are grieving the loss of loved ones and family members. And be with the grief that comes with the loss of property as well. God, send your peace. Send your peace. We also lift up uh, the people in New England who experienced a hurricane this past week as well. God, be with them. Be with them. God, we lift up so much. We know your hearts break for the same things that break ours and even more. Be with parents who are anxious as children are getting ready to return to school or some have already started. God, keep our children safe at school. Keep them safe. And now we boldly pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, friends, praying blessings upon your week, and receive now this blessing. May God help us to do good each and every day, out of gratitude for God's goodness and grace and love for us each and every day. Go now in the peace of Christ. Amen. All right, friends, I hope everyone has a wonderful week and stay safe.